What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fye here. Sorry, I'm a little bit under the weather. Not COVID, thankfully, but uh, just a little bit of a sinus thing. So I'm trying to fight through it. Bear with me. We'll go quickly game by game of where we're at tonight. It's obviously, you know, we've got a lot of questionable tags and a lot's going to come. I'll be live at six. Sheets should be back tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right. Let's starting with uh, the Clippers, uh, assuming that, that Paul George and Kawhi play, I don't see a whole lot of reason to get a ton of interest. If they're out, I actually think Zubac in this matchup, we've seen the bigs just go nuts against Charlotte. Seems like a good spot for him. So he would be the one guy I kind of consider a little bit. On the on the Charlotte side, I certainly don't not, don't mind Rozier, but I don't feel like you need to play him at you know what should be pretty high ownership as of right now. Saberson has him around twenty percent, might be a little lower by the end of the day. I kind of like PJ Washington, consistently been right in that that thirties range, except for they played some weird blowouts. And again, this could be one of them, but it's more logical to think it stays close with them playing at home. And I think PJ Washington at fifty six hundred is reasonable, so he's the probably my highest level of interest along with Rozier. Um, if you want to do the Kelly Oubre or, or Mason Plumley thing, I wish you luck, but it probably won't be me doing it with you. Milwaukee, assuming that we get everybody to play, I think holiday is the one I'm most interested in, but I don't mind Giannis obviously either. It's a slate there where if you, there is going to be value. And if you can find the right value, I think getting some exposure to both holiday and Giannis makes sense. Um, holiday, obviously you don't need nearly the value you do for Giannis. But I do think Giannis is in a really good spot tonight, and I expect, you know, the normal 60-some-odd fantasy points and raw points are a thing. So uh, Giannis is certainly right up there for me, uh, and Holiday is a nice mid-tier, mid-high-level play at 7,400, even with um, even with Middleton back. While you might see some 20 fantasy point games from Holiday, you're going to see a lot of 50s as well, especially in this kind of a matchup. Not getting too much currently on the uh, Orlando side. A bunch of guys who I could say, uh, oh, maybe. Franz Wagner, Marcus Mar Markel Fultz, uh, Paolo, I think is probably the most interesting, but I, I just don't think in this matchup, I really am that desperate to play any of them. So I am probably going to be skipping out the first couple games, which also buys me some time possibly and going from there. I don't know what's going to happen with the bigs from, from Boston right now. I don't think I'm going to play Blake Griffin, even at three K assuming, even if he's starting. So I, I just want to try and figure out how we see the lineups going. We'll probably cover that more around six. Um, I do think Brogdon is strongly in play. He's been consistently in that 30s range. And anytime you take extra bodies off the court, uh, they could always go small and play him, especially in a matchup with Toronto, who will be happy to go small occasionally at times with Siakam at the five. Um, as always, Tatum, Smart, and Brown are all strongly in play. Um, I don't have any of them as priorities in this matchup, but I think all of them are I'm completely fine with. On the Toronto side, I, I will make a priority of getting to one of Siakam, Van Vliet, and Barnes. As of right now, it's Siakam for me. You're going to see there's a lot of guards that we have value from, so you're going to end up wanting to to get some forwards and some centers in uh, as spend-ups. And I, I like the uh, Siakam play. I like I, I have it Sia Siakam, Van Vliet, then Barnes, but I think all three of them are definitely strongly in play uh, in this matchup. On the in the OKC game, the Robinson Earl thing is it's getting a little more consistent to where it's like okay maybe we should consider this a value play. So I've got him considered, um, but I don't think it's a priority for me. The priorities in this game are going to be Giddy off of a couple of big ones um, in Atlanta. I like Giddy at seventy five hundred, and if you're not going to use Giddy, I like the idea of using Shea. And in large field, I think mixing in some Jalen Williams and Poku. But I like the idea right off the bat of one of Giddy or Shea running it back with Trey on the other side and Jalen Johnson. I think that's a really, really good way to build like a little mini stack from a game that isn't the desired target of all the games we're playing. I think you could even throw Capella into the mix. And I think taking a long shot on DeJounte Murray is not the worst idea. Uh, if you're not going to play Jalen Johnson, I would encourage you to tr try and get a little bit of exposure. It's very speculative on, Jay on uh, Jarrett Culver, but he's looked really good the last couple of games. I know they have more bodies back, but I, I would speculate there and I would speculate on A.J. Griffin, who is been a really, really good pickup for them as a, as a rookie this year. And I think it is a guy you're going to be hearing me talk about for years to come. So, uh, and I think they're starting to figure it out without the other bigs there. So uh, none of them priorities for me, except for Jalen Johnson and Trey young, but I do think that you could definitely talk me into Capella Griffin, as I mentioned, Murray Culver. There's a lot of guys I'm considering from Atlanta uh, at first look. M Miami is, is just a, you know, everybody questionable. It's going to be hard to, to, to assess this team at this moment. Uh, as of right now, Bam is the only one who I look like, like I look at and I feel, okay, well, that's a really strong play. I think Jimmy Butler is reasonable. 
but I'm not overly excited about anybody as of right now. If everyone plays, if we get anybody out, I probably will switch over to some Miami uh, love. On the Memphis side, they, they, right now on Saber Sim, they're sort of speculating that Jaron Jackson is out. They've got him as, you know, we've got him as doubtful, which I think it's likely that he's out. You've already obviously got Zaire Williams, Danny Green, Desmond Bain out, and then you might get Steven Adams out, which is just a speculation at this point, but you can see the projection. And if he's out, that's why guys like Aldama, Brandon Clark, Conchar, David Roddy are all showing up as good point per dollar plays. I prefer Aldama as the safer one. I like Clark for upside and I like Concher uh, if people forget about him because he's a little bit more expensive. Not quite getting to as much jaw in this matchup. It's a tough matchup. Kind of curious how this game plays out, but um, always a tough matchup to play point guards against Miami. Not just Lowry, just the way that they defend the position in general is really strong. So I'm a little lower on jaw than I am some of the other spend ups today. Jumping over to another spend up that I do like, if you're not playing Giannis, I think that Embiid is completely reasonable at 11-4. It's a good matchup. Um, you have Philly, who's kind of needed a lot of a lot from Embiid lately, and I think that 60 fantasy points is completely reasonable here. So I do like I do like Embiid. Harden's coming back. He tends to play when he comes back from things. Uh, what do we have him at right now, minutes wise? I'm just taking a quick look. 34 minutes. If he plays 34 minutes at 9K against his former team that doesn't play defense. Certainly think he's interesting as well. So one of Embiid and Harden uh, are definitely on the list for me. Even as as they're not priorities right now, I do think I'm going to end up with a little bit of exposure there on the Harden side if no one else flocks that direction. Um, on the Houston side, the most interest I would have would be Jabari Smith. I think Shengun is fine. Uh, I think Jalen Green or Porter, you can always take that chance. I just don't see it as being a priority here. So Jabari Smith is the only one I'm really considering at the moment. Um, 5,100, probably a little too cheap can certainly get you in the thirties and you feel really comfortable with him. Uh, the minutes should be pretty secure. Got him currently at 32 minutes. I feel very comfortable about Jabari at 5,100 at 32 minutes. Uh, Phoenix, Dallas, the, the rematch of the, you know, the, well, I guess the second round of the, 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 the playoffs last year, I almost said conference finals, but that was before uh, Dallas lost to golden state there. Uh, I have Aiton in my early build because I needed a center who's fit. I don't think I'm going to end up playing Aiton, but uh, I, I just see he just fit in my early build. So I, I have him, but I'm not trying to go out of my way to get him. Devin Booker, always a great tournament play. In fact, if you look at Booker versus Shea, we might be wondering why we're not playing more Booker than Shea in general. Just because you have a price discount. You've got a guy who's put up more ceiling games recently than Shea has. And he's really taking the reins without Chris Paul. Chris Paul still is officially questionable. I have him as more likely out, but he may come back tonight. So just keep an eye out for that. And if he doesn't, it's the same old rule. One of Booker, Aiton, and Payne are all strongly in play. It's a worse matchup than usual for them. One of those guys will probably get there. As of right now, none are priorities. But I could see myself just doing something. With, if, I, if my lineup looks a little too chalky, just making sure I go out and get Booker as my spend up. Because I think that is a completely viable route and has won people a ton of money over the past few weeks. Um, on the Dallas side, probably not going to get to Luca tonight, even with all the value. Uh, I do think Luca plays well and put, probably puts up around 60. He's a little more expensive than the other guys who I feel like are going to put up similar numbers enough of the time. If Christian Wood is out, I would go to Dinwiddie or, and I would go to more Luca, And I would also go to some Hardaway. Uh, Hardaway probably being the most interesting play in this game at the moment. Uh, but I don't feel even overwhelmingly excited about that. So he would be my favorite of these guys, but you'll see why I'm a little bit lower on them. Because in Indiana, we're going to have a situation where we've got a bunch of guys and people who are being misprojected right now. Like TJ McConnell, if he plays and starts at 3,900, they're sort of like hedging, like he may not play, he may play. If he plays, he's not going to play, what, 12 minutes. He's going to play probably closer to 28, and he will become one of the best values in the slate. Nemhard, if he's out again, along with uh, Halliburton, right back to Nemhard, right back to some Neesmith, right back to Buddy Heald, and right back to Ben Matherin for me. This is the game I'm probably most interested in stacking. I'm very nervous about them about Indy getting blown out, considering that's been happening to them pretty consistently. Even the game they won recently against the Lakers, they were getting blown out. But the value is too hard to ignore. So it feels like my favorites are Nemhard, Heald, and Matherin. I think you could actually play all three of those guys together if McConnell was out. If McConnell is in, I would go McConnell, Nemhard, and one of Matherin and Heald. And my favorite run back on the other side is Clay. I have no problem if you want to play Draymond or Steph here. I uh, really like this matchup. It's going to be a fast-paced one. So if you do get a close game, you could really cash in. And that's sort of my main overall outlook is to have two players, at least from the indie side, 
try to run it back with Clay or Draymond or one of these guys from Golden State. Get some exposure to to one of the SGA, Giddy, or Poku running back with Trey Young and Jalen Johnson. That seems like a logical route. I think Siakam with one of Tatum or Brown is an interesting, you know, way to spend your money. Um, and then I think whatever Memphis value opens up, which is still up in the air in the uh, at this point in the morning. So I will be live with you guys at six Eastern. Uh, hopefully my voice will be better because I'm already it's already hurting from talking. And uh, good luck today, everybody. Let's get back on track and make some money.